run it back, 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 run it back. Lost through the band, hit the crawl back. Can't take no more L's, I need all that. Run off with the pack and get the don't crap. The four feel short, nigga four flat. Run it back, 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 run it back. Quit that little drop, now you hustling. They counted you out, now you bubbling. Took you some losses, but bounce back. Now they feeding for you like you good crap. Run it back, 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 run it back. Lost through the band, hit the crawl back. Can't take no more L's, I need all that. Run off with the pack and get the don't crap. The four feel short, nigga four flat. Run it back, run it back, run it back, run it back, run it back. All right, this is Sergeant War Dog with the War Dog Trail. And I got somebody else special for you tonight. As you notice with my latest series of guests I've been rolling out, I'm bringing out anybody that's making noise in the 2A community, veterans, or the outdoors, and hunting. And I got another one for you tonight. You can tell just by his name that he popping off. You might think you hood. You might think you redneck. Hey, world, I want to introduce you to the one and only Chris from Hood Neck, baby. What's up, Chris? Uh -huh. How you doing, bro, man? Appreciate you for having me on here, man. It's an honor, it's an honor, man. Chilling, bro. Chilling, bro. Hey, first off, I want to tell you congratulations on everything I've been able to see you do online. You say you got your 501c3 booming. You turn Hood Neck into a nonprofit organization. Uh, you, you also established Camp Hood Neck. Hey, from the outside, those of us that are fans of yours, bro, we can't do nothing but salute you, man, and thank you. Man, I real. appreciate that, man. That's thank you, thank you, man. So if I you do don't mind, <laughs> yeah. Um, if you don't mind, man, we're gonna start you off. A lot of people don't know that you're a veteran. We really, yeah, I really want to tap in and let get let get, uh, let them hear from you that you're a veteran, bro. What's up? Oh yeah, man. <laughs> Thirteen Bravo, man. Uh, three to nine FA. Carson, man. I did a turn. Well, uh, uh, yeah. Deployed as soon as I kind of got in, deployed to Kuwait, went to Buren, rotated through uh, Alisad Airfield, sent batteries through up there in Iraq. Yeah. Ain't really much. You're an old guy, man. Like I said, I was there in 2015. Uh, the military totally different from from, from 2015. Yeah. Yeah. It ain't nothing compared, man. I got to come up under like a lot of old heads who've been in from so 98, from the first invasion and a lot of stuff like that. So everybody I came up under, you know, made us know like yeah this ain't you really on vacation man this ain't nothing so <laughs> but um yeah when the military man yeah got my full experience you know 13 bravo's artillery if anybody don't know so that's just a gun bunny so i ain't do nothing but blow stuff up and shoot guns my whole term so that was fun this experience man it gave me everything i needed in so so that's what's up that's what's up um if you let the world know what actually made you want to join man what made you want to go ahead and say yeah and that you was cool with it so man there's so many different factors so man I, I i don't come from a military family but both of my grandfathers were in the military my grandpa my my father's father was a 12 bravo combat engineer and then my grand my mother's father was in the navy uh got cousins in the military had uncles in but it was really just a Man, you know, just going through life, just trying to figure out what I'm going to do with my life and stuff like that. I was 23 when I joined, man. I had went to college. Uh, you know, just, you know, I just, I left college. I was working, working at the job. Man, I remember my last, uh, my last little uh, W-2s and stuff like that for paying taxes or whatever. You know, we get your tax returns and stuff back. Yeah. I remember yeah. getting all that. Remember, uh, I only made like seventeen thousand dollars that year and i was like man i'm fucking poor man like you know i was like man i'm i'm poor man i gotta do something i need to change my life for real for real you want too many options man you know school was i had already gave school a shot and yeah i was like man that ain't for me man i was still going i was still trying but i'm putting myself in debt while i'm working man i'm working you know i'm it just ain't for me like you know i was like man i ain't trying to live like this and i was like man i know one day i want kids man i don't got nothing to get my kids I want to see the world on pole. I can't see nothing. You know, it was just, you know, just yeah, just going through my stuff, coming into an adulthood, becoming a real man. You know, I'm still at home with my mama and shit. I'm like, man, I gotta, I gotta do something. Gotta but make uh, a move. me and me and my group of friends, man, it's uh three of us, man. Three of us joined the army. One joined the navy, man. The first two, one was shipped before us, and the one who I left with, Lewis, he's still into this day. But Lewis had a uh, he was on his last strike on passing his ass valve, man. It took him so long to pass it, but his last time taking it was my first time taking it. 
but we took it together and we both passed and we shipped off together and man you know it was just looking for structure and guidance man just trying to just trying to figure out life we was trying to trying to get through it man because where i was at when going down the wrong path for real for real all right so <clears throat> be real with me now if you knew that there was somebody out there that wasn't so sure if they should or should not use the military option, what would you tell them? Man, do that shit. It's a cheat code. That shit changed my <laughs> life. I swear to God. Hey, man, that's what's you up. Gonna, you gonna have <laughs> people don't realize, man. You the military taught me, man. I much rather choose my sacrifices than my sacrifices choose me. Choose you know. Me. So you, you get, man, man. I, I much rather pick what I'm in control because you're gonna have to sacrifice one way or another. Don't think it's you. You're not gonna get through this life not sacrificing, man. So you know, choose the things you sacrifice. Life is already hard coming from where I come from, and you know, it wasn't nothing I felt like I hadn't already seen, but the world, you know, I was like, man, you know, I can, yeah. I can handle this. I'm tall. I ain't scared of nobody. I'm six five, so I ain't, I ain't <laughs> fearful of people, you know. So I didn't yeah, go. Yeah. Fearful so i'm feeling myself and stuff like that and i'm not a child at that point i'm 22 23. so you know i'm you know i i it was a challenge i was willing to that's why i pick uh artillery man if they'd offer me infantry out of went man they offered me artillery uh mp and, and fucking special forces i ain't gonna lie it's i no i would if i would have known artillery was just as close but i would have i should have went sf man sf was cool man i'm i got to meet a lot of sf cool a lot of sf guys that was cool as fuck but artillery was a Man, you make the move, you make the earth shake when you shoot stuff, man. When you shoot artillery, man, the whole world shake. That's Artie the most powerful no thing joke. I ever did, man. You know? Artie so, ain't no joke, boy. Man, Matter I tell fact. people, it's a cheat code, though. The military cheat code, man. You got going if you're mentally strong and you really want it. If you're looking for discipline and shit like that, and you know, feel like you got a, a high character person, you look for integrity and shit. It's a cheat code, especially for black men. I tell people all the time, man, that shit changed my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for real, for real. Me and my brothers, man, they are two of them. One in the the one in the Navy, he out, but it, Navy changed his life. Well, the one, my Hispanic brother, he still in. He out Germany. He living it up. I live my military career through him, not because he's still in, doing it. You know, he all over the world, been Korea, Germany, all this stuff. But he ain't got no deployments and stuff. But that's still okay. my boy. I still got my other partner. He uh, he's out. He helped me with my nonprofit and stuff, man. Some of the videos and stuff you pull up, you'll see him there with. So we still all here, but man, that shit. Yeah, see, we talk about it all the time, man. That shit leveled us up on a tax bracket, man. Put us on our feet. <laughs> for I swear, man, skipping. for real. That you shit put us on our feet. It did. It did. It did. And I ain't never, ain't never been ashamed about it, man. <laughs> Not at all, man. Not at all. Most, man, tell people, it, man, it make you, it, it, it helps you build your confidence in yourself, man. They break you down, but it's, it, it be, when they build you back up, it's how you want to be built, man. They tell you, they give you the foundation, but it's all up to you the type of person type of character you want to use these tools and become you know so yeah that's how i did it and it benefit me still benefit me Bet that up. Bet that up. now um walk us through your from your military service to you uh starting hood neck and when and starting uh camp hood neck <clears throat> so now so hood nick is always something i used to always say man uh, my dad's side my dad's side from louisiana mississippi uh my mom's side from texas so i always grew up like uh fishing and stuff like that i grew up in with my grandparents up in hitchcock not too far from galveston but uh shooting squirrels and coons and stuff like that in my grandmother's garden because she grew fruits and vegetables but um hood nick something i always used to say man my white brothers in the army i used to go in the mountains and shoot with them all the time and i used to just always tell them that i'm a hood nick and i used to say man i like that they used to always laugh and you know just a little small stuff you know nothing too serious but uh when i got out the army man i was working at this uh gun store for a, a super short time and uh it was a guy named pete pete is he's a pizza dutch immigrant like his he went he wasn't born in america but he got his green car and stuff like that but he got a super long brown beard Super long brown hair, but Pete Hunt and stuff like that. He's a cool white boy. And uh, he was like, man, you want to go hog hunting? And I was like, hell yeah, I want to go hog hunting. So uh, <laughs> I, I tried to get my black aunt, the dude I went to the army with, he out this time. So I'm trying to get him to go. And he was like, nah, I ain't trying to do no hog hunting. I ain't trying to do none of that or whatever. So I ended up going with Pete and whatnot. And I ended up knocking this hog down. And uh, this, 20, this 2018, I got the service in 2017. So this 2018, uh we knocked the hog down and i take a picture with it 
and uh these back when the facebook groups and stuff was real popular real jumping and stuff like that and i posted yeah. pitching all these different black hunting facebook groups man i just want to do hood nick shit with my friends and man it, it went viral <laughs> like back then like when, when it went i got like a hundred thousand likes and a hundred thousand shares it was crazy man and all these people was asking me like man put it on the shirt put it on the shirt and yeah, i'm yeah. like you know i don't know nothing about shirts at that time i don't know nothing about selling nothing <laughs> I don't know nothing about none of that. <laughs> nothing I'm doing now. I know absolute zero. Uh, and um, I put it on. It, it, I put it on a shirt, but it wasn't my hood neck logo. It wasn't the. Uh, it wasn't the. I got my little. It wasn't this logo. My, my okay. hood. Neck logo. It was just a block letter logo. It just say hood neck. Just regular font. And uh, I put it out there, and nobody bought it. Like nobody, zero people bought it. But I ain't tripped. It wasn't like I was trying to, you know. I went thinking this could change my life at the time. No, so, <laughs> I'm like, cool. I went viral. You know, on to the next. I'm still working and stuff, trying to you know figure out life coming from the military and shit like that, man. Just trying yeah. to, you know, figure it out. Just trying to process, trying to reintegrate, man. It's it was. I feel like yeah. it was easier for me to to cope to the military than to cope back to the to civilian world after coming from the military, man. Having all that structure. Yeah. And come yeah. into a civilian world with no with with everything so everything so unorganized and so unstructured, man. It was really like a, <laughs> man. It was a hard time for me, for real. For me. I spent so much time fishing and, and and hunting as much as I could to really just get outside and just like think, you know, just just get yeah. away from everybody. And you know, it you was like just a that. lot. You now, so I'm saying I went hunting. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go hard hunting, man. I'm trying to, you know, I'm going through that stuff in the process. And yeah, I, hell yeah, I'm taking every opportunity I can to go hunting with anybody, but. I'm going through all that at the same time. But uh so I go through, I put the shirt on and nobody buy it, uh, and I'm just wearing the shirt. I'm even doing photography at the time, man. And, uh I'm taking pictures of people. I'm just you know, but quite I got a nice camera from from when I was in the army. I had uh picked up a camera. You know, you can pick up little hobbies in the army and stuff like that, just to do so I mean I take pictures and stuff like that. Yeah. So I got kind of good at it, and then I just started, you know, taking pictures on the outside as a little side hustle. And uh my my, I don't know if you keep up with football, but Mike Evans from yeah. the Buccaneers is a good friend of mine. Yeah, yeah, Mike Evans, that's what's up. Scroll through my page, you'll see it on the but uh, wide receiver. Up, yeah, man, I grew up with Mikey, man, and uh, Mikey had a celebrity game. And I was like, man, let me come through and take some pictures. And he's like, man, yeah, yeah, come on. And I had just so happened to have my original hood neck shirt on, and uh, some guy come up to me, man, he like uh six ten. He was like, man, what's hood neck? And I explained it to him and stuff like that. He was like, man, that's amazing, man. I like that, man. I, man, you got to get a logo and stuff. He like, gave me some tips. I don't know who this guy was, but he gave me a lot. He gave me like some amazing. He gave me like the best advice ever. He's and, a big um, game, huh? Man, for real, for real. I, I, man, I wish I knew who he was. But um, I went home, like that whole ride from College Station back to Galveston. I'm thinking, I'm like, man, I need a logo. But I'm broke. I <laughs> got my little boy. My, boy, my son was born my last month in the Army. So, you know, I'm transition out still trying to figure out how to be a, a a daddy and everything man need money and all this you know va ain't ain't there yet at that yeah. time so this yeah. is life kicking my ass yeah yeah i feel you I remember, so yeah. i go to the uh i'm starting to look up logos and stuff like that because i got an image in my head of what i feel like hood next should look like like that logo on that shirt and um mm -hmm. i'm like man they're trying to charge me eight hundred dollars for, uh, for for a letter. For, for they're trying to charge me eight four hundred dollars for the top part and four hundred dollars for the bottom. I'm like, man, I ain't got eight hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I ain't got eight hundred dollars for this. So uh, I look up Photoshop and uh, flashback to 05, my freshman in high school. Man, I took this class called Webmaster in the high school. Man, Mr. Cito, he taught Photoshop. He taught us how to make uh, he taught us Photoshop and how to make websites. Photoshop is exactly the same from 2005 as it is in 2023. The technology is just updated, but every the format, fonts, and everything, the setup, the layout, exactly the same. And I remember because I took it three of my four years out of high school, and I was amazing at. It. I used to get in trouble for putting his head on, like photoshopping his head on Brokeback Mountain pictures and stuff like that. Like I used to, I was a fool <laughs> in high school, man. I was a fool in high school because I was good at Photoshop, but uh. I downloaded a bootleg copy of Photoshop and it was exactly the same. And I made the logo you see today, my hood nigga logo that's on here. Man, I put it on the shirt. I end up, uh, but in that meantime, in between time, my my boy Richard, Richard is a high school, the Brazosport High School uh, head football coach, head athletic coordinator and everything right now. 
But uh, at this time, you know, we're just going through life, man. You know, young man just trying to figure it out and stuff like that, man. Damon John from Shark Tank had like this free little class and stuff like that in Galveston. So, you know, I went and sit in on it. He ain't come up, but his team was there and they put out so much free information and all this stuff. And I was like, man, this drop shipping shit the way of the future. So I'm figuring out how to sell shirts online and stuff. And I see people talking about drop shipping. And I was like, man, I remember everything from that class, damn near, like for real, for real. And I put two and two together. And I put my logo on there and I set up a drop shipping account and I put it online and I go to sleep. Man, when I wake up, I got to sell. I don't know who it's from. I don't know. <laughs> never talked to him or nothing. It, but it's with my new logo. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, it's, yeah. at this, I'm I'm like the type of person who, like, when I put my, I, I'm, I, I need to make sure it's a legit website before I put my card information on it. I don't just put my credit card information everywhere and stuff like that. Yeah. So when I when they did that, I was like, man, who is? I was like, I could be a scammer. I'm like, they don't know. Like it, my mind was blown. When I was like, somebody I don't know from another state I never talked to a day in my life has just bought something for me. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, oh, I could do this shit. And it was. <laughs> It fucked me up for real. I was like, man, I probably only made at the time I don't pay like two, three dollars on the shirt. I, it was probably starting, yeah, it was just putting it out there. You know, I didn't know what I know now, but it, it it fucked me up for real, for real. And I just kept pushing and promoting it, and it's been growing, man. And that was 2017, 2018. That whole year, 2018, man, I grinded on social media hard, like pushing shirts man i wasn't getting sales but i was taking pictures every day just like getting content doing stuff like that and just trying to get sales but i'll probably get i'll probably get like a set two three sales a week i'll be real i'll probably get three sales a week so that's you know it wasn't a lot but at the time i was like man i'm people out here and i just reshare the post you know reach yeah. post the pictures and just keep telling the story people was like man i'm a hood neck and still saying i just keep meeting more people that's like i'm and I was like, man, I know there's other people out here. I got a whole, <laughs> I, I know I'm not the only one, you know? And uh, <laughs> it was just crazy. I I, I, I had ended up uh, working my way into SHOT Show and I go to SHOT Show and uh, but before all that, before I get to SHOT Show, man, Black Rambo, man, that's my boy. We, before he yeah. even up, he trouble, man, Instagram. I've been knowing him before the social media. We just two niggas in the South with guns. We was just posting our guns. <laughs> and everybody was like, man, y'all need to stop posting y'all stuff and all that. But he was cool. And I know he a Marine. And I was in the Army. And I was like, man, now, you know, we just, we just like guns. These, I know it's hood niggas out here. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I know we out here. So I yeah. talked to him. He was like, man, I'm getting, I'm going to SHOT Show, bro. You got to get there. I was like, man, I got to figure out the way to get there, man. And I figured out, man, by the grace of God, man, uh, I remember saying the prayer for real, for real, man. I was like, man, if this supposed to be, if this meant for me, man, to let this happen, God, please, just give me a sign or something. Yeah. Man, I had no money for a plane ticket. I had somebody reach out to me and say, man, I help you pay this plane ticket. I just want my money back when you can pay me back. Man, they got me a plane ticket there. Somebody yeah. was at SHOT Show. I was like, man, I got to add me and beat you sleep on my couch. Man, when I tell you I went to Shot Show broke, what? Oh, man, I went to Shot Show broke eating McDonald's dollar menu. I don't eat McDonald's today. I hate McDonald's, but I I know how to survive. I ain't been poor my whole life. I don't know yeah. nothing else. I know yeah. how to survive. So I was like, yeah, I can. Yeah. I'm gonna hustle this. I mean, I'm gonna flip this into something. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna flip it into, <laughs> but I'm gonna flip it into something. And uh, yeah. and that's what I do, man. I go to Shot Show and I, I link up with him, and I just see the game and I see the business. Like, man, I'm a like I'm, I'm an uh, analytical person. Like I, 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 I visualize stuff, and I can see how it's moving. I can see, you know, I can just, I just see stuff that people don't care to see. I feel like that they, not that they don't see, people just don't care to see. But I just see trends yeah. move, business, how people operate, how people move, how people talk. I can see the differences in everything, man, for real, for real. And uh, I got there, and I got to see it firsthand. I got to see how they do business firsthand. I got to see how. I got to see the game, the blueprint, face to face. Like, all I gotta do is open my eyes and look around, you know. So, uh, it was one of them things, man. I, I went home. I mean, I was at Shot Show and Black Rumble at the time. He was like, man, don't nobody know me. He said, don't nobody here care about me. Don't nobody, nobody, nothing. Like, he'll tell you the same story, man. He was like, man, don't nobody, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, man, your demographic is just too young right now. In the next few years, your demographic gonna be able to buy guns and everybody gonna, you know, you just, you just gotta teach them to be smart, be safe, be legal, teach them to do the right thing. Man, you don't wanna be teaching kids to do the wrong. So, man, he was like, man, you are right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He go home, he started doing the stay safe, stay legal stuff. Man, he exploded, because at that, by side show, he probably like 150,000, 200,000. He probably bigger than that at that time, I don't know, but they don't know who he is. Black America do. 
the youth do, but nobody is shot. <laughs> nobody, you know, like who is this crazy looking dude? How he getting here? That's how they treat him. <laughs> real for real. For real, man. That's how they treating him back then, bro. Oh, excellent. I'm on some. I'm ask him. Ask him. I ain't, I ain't know that he was. He had ask went to it like that. They didn't. They didn't. That was. That was man. Ask him. So anyways, he go home and his shot. He you know he he promoting his selfish shot show. He got that personality. He going man. I'm gonna do me regardless. I I don't care how y'all feel me. I'm a loving person. Y'all just looking at me. Y'all judge me if I look. And you know not you know no. He, yeah, he a great person, amazing friend. Like you know, but they don't know that. So he kept doing his thing through shot show. He go home and boom, he probably at the next shot show. We gonna jump forward. The next shot show 2020. Man, he probably was that 2019. So yeah, 2023 probably at a uh, half a million, almost a million. He can't walk five minutes without getting through shot show. Everybody know who he is. The innocent <laughs> self had booked me to come out there to host something for uh Project Child Safe and uh, I mean the Let's Go Shooting. Cause that whole year, man, all I did was grind, man. I made some connections in Shot Show and I saw the business. So from that whole year, from uh that 2019 shot show the 2020 i just did business i i seen how the social media trends and stuff i yeah i saw the game and i just applied it to myself and it was a wrap i just been pushing and pushing and we grow every year uh i came to a point and i was like man i don't i'm not a, a i don't want to be an influencer i guess you would say i was like i'm gonna be so much more because hood deck is a culture now nah, i mean i've been doing it for a few years I'm meeting people all over the country, all over the world, saying they hood neck, man. Just how like people say is they rednecks all over the world. It's people that say they cowboys all over the world, man. I got people all over the world right now saying they hood necks. They hood really neck, baby. Approach with, and I was like, man, I got to do right by this shit, like for real, for real. Because the shots going through shot shows and learning lesson, because that hood shit uh, off putting to a lot of companies. You know, it, you know, it's they're scared man a lot of people scared of the hood and not you know I, it's understandable why they feel that way they just don't know the things that they don't know they just you know that's just like so i started uh i started embracing that let them think something negative not give them something positive back every time so that's why i real reason i went 501c3 because i was like man i really want to build a culture of people were around to to do positive and do good and really you know contribute to our community you know be real selfless service type stuff but already doing the stuff we're doing you know you're showing them how because i know at a point i didn't know how i didn't know i could do this yeah i didn't yeah right. 10 years ago i did not know i ain't going to have no plan or none of this nothing along these lines or none of that but um that when uh when the innocent stuff uh paid me to come out there for uh shot show they had uh it was a fifteen hundred dollar payment and i feel like i used that whole check to start my nonprofit to go uh 501c3 with all that whole money because by that time i had uh i wasn't rich still ain't rich wasn't far from it but i was able enough to pay you know i had sold enough shirts to to be able to afford my own plane ticket that year the shot show before my own hotel that year the shot show so it was okay you know, i'm making okay. progress you know i'm in a whole different state you know i ain't i ain't where i'm at now but i'm able to make it on my own two feet you know uh, and this past shot show, I, I judged myself by shot show. So this past shot show, man, I was able to bring my board of directors with me, man. So I got a, a employee with me and stuff what? like that. I'm saying, man, so I, that's how I judge my growth off of shot show and stuff like that. So I remember not barely getting in. Now I'm bringing people in and stuff with me. So it's you know it's a it's a it's like a that's how I just you know like I judge my progression. I see myself. I see my progress and stuff like that. But uh, I did that uh, stuff with the innocent self, and I will use my check to. So go 501c3 because i what i didn't know is when you do stuff you get your check on the back end this is my first time i'm learning the business and stuff like this you do this stuff you don't get paid to afterwards man by the time they, they gave me that money i was already ready for uh <laughs> i i wouldn't you know i you know i was up i had already figured out life i wasn't stressing for bills at the time i was barely getting by but not as barely you know so I just I'm put this whole fifteen hundred towards making this a real five hundred one c three. Get my paperwork, get my IRS paperwork, everything legit, and that's what I did, man. As soon as I did that, I feel like I got a grant probably a, for ten k. As soon as I got my uh my my tax uh paperwork back, so I got my um my tax exempt letter back for in March, and I think when we were going to the pandemic, like uh we went to pandemic right after I got my tax yeah. exempt, my tax exempt letter, we went to the pandemic. So it was nothing I could do, but just grind, just do social media stuff and promote. 
And it's like, but I'm I'm legit now. And it was like a blessing and a curse because I had already went to SHOT Show and I, you know, I'm getting like social media links and codes and stuff to sell stuff so I could generate income. And 2020 was a crazy year. So people was buying all type of two-way accessories and stuff like that. So yeah, I was making money in the pandemic. It was, man, it was a blessing and a curse for real, for real. It was, I got to learn the business, man. It was just like, I got to really sit down. I can't go nowhere. I can't do nothing but mm-hmm. learn how to make a dollar. Put it, and yeah. I start putting everything towards a nonprofit because I was like, man, I want to take people hunting. I got everything I need, but it costs a lot of money to take other people hunting. Who Everybody you tell <laughs> Who you tell <laughs> That shit is expensive. So I got the grant, and the grant was 5K a friend, and 5K the, the second, the next year. So I spent 5K taking people hunting that during the pandemic when I could and stuff like that, finding different spots. You know, you could go outside and be six feet apart and do all this stuff. So yeah, we can still go hunt. So I did that and it was, man, it was a blessing, man. I was really showing people how to be self-sustainable when the world was shut down. Uh, start getting people into agriculture and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, we just kept growing. So 2021, it was like, man, we need a property of our own because we spending so much money on guys. Guys was jipping us for money. We was putting deposits down and not getting calls back. All kind oh. of crazy stuff. Die. Yeah, I mean, you know, we was, I'm out here fundraising and getting all this money and I'm not trying to waste it, you know. I'm trying to really spend it on everybody, on you know, where we can take people and really take them out. And so, I was like, man, it's time to start fundraising for our own, and that's what we started doing. Starting in the end of 21, 20, Shot Show 22, I had uh, I was at Shot Show 22 with business, a briefcase and business plans, man. Everybody I had been relationships <laughs> with, for real, all the gun companies, everybody I've been relationships with in those in those previous years from 2018 up to 2022. Oh yeah, I'm, this is what I'm trying to do, man. I I don't want no free guns. I need them. I need investors. Uh, this what we. So I'm trying to make happen. And uh, <clears throat> some of them was fucking with me, but that was like I want to see you do it first. And when nobody really feel like you want us to give you money to build a property and all this, oh, you can't do that and all this. You're not gonna build. I want we come here to ask you about it if I knew I couldn't do it. <laughs> if I feel like I wouldn't be here, everything I'd have done so far, it was just like man, that was the next step, man. You know, I was like, man, I. I remember when I struggled to get here. I ain't, yeah. I'm not struggling to get here at this point. I'm actually not investing my into my own my nonprofit to help us build it up. This is what we're doing. We got relationships with these companies, these organizations, like real solid structure, you know, real, real relationships, business relationships. And um, some of them were, some of them weren't. And then I walked out of Shot Show with nothing, but uh, I had an investor I was talking to, and when I came home and. It was like, man, we really want to help. We want to make a big donation, and they made a donation for us to be able to to to, to get to the property where we at now. And we're still trying to buy a property with to go in with Texas Park and Wildlife. They want to partner with us on building up a range and stuff like that. So, yeah, I can rant all day about it, man. I can tell you, but that's just really that's just really how it's been, and the, the progress from the military to hood, Nick. And we just been doing a nonprofit work, man. So I got a little team and stuff now, and we. But teaching people how to fish, farm, and hunt. So we try to be fully self-sustainable and vertically integrated. Um, okay, okay. Growing your, growing your own fruits and vegetables, hydroponics, aquaponics, water energy, wind energy, solar energy. Uh, yeah, trying to teach you how to live off the land for real, for real. How to protect yourself on the land, how to go get your food on the land, how to do everything. So a full circle facility is what, we, what, was what we're creating. The tri- uh, triple F is what we call it, fish, farm, and firearm. But it's a full yeah. So you'll really be able to survive here once we up and running. We got a range uh we're on 15 acres right now, Brazil. We got a range on the property where we can shoot. Uh we dug a pond. We just haven't filled it up yet. We're trying to, you know, try to let the earth and stuff sit a little bit more, trying to get some more rainwater. Uh yeah. we're gonna plant some crops and fields. We're gonna put a trap shooting range on it and the archery range as well, so you can learn bow hunting. Because we're bow hunting structures and we're hunting structures with Texas Park and Wildlife. Excuse me. And we're hunting masters as well with Texas Youth Hunting Program Association. So try to do everything by the book. So when they tell us we can't do it, we're like, yeah, we can. We we certify mm-hmm. the biggest organizations. We You legit. You legit got him. <laughs> don't let the hood nigga fool yeah. you, man. That's what they do. Yeah. You know. They be like, oh, you can't do that. I'm like, man, I'm instructed. Just I got the same power you got, if not more, you know. <laughs> so well, when the whole different position, man, that picture you pulled up at the top, man, that was with the CEO, the National Shooting Sports Foundation, uh, our mayor. And I had a oh. police chief down in Galveston, so we did a lot giveaway. Uh, 
that was when we gave our gun locks to the hood. Man, I had the police. We gave our gun locks to the police station. Then we had everybody come to the hood. And we passed our gun locks as well. So that was oh, a good thing. Okay. So we really big in the community. Now. We got our mayor. You know, we got our mayor giving us support. <laughs> everybody showing us love now. So we really just trying to be, you know, real big into the community. Say that one more time now. You said this is even a man. Uh -huh. Yeah. So to my so to I'll go right to left. So on the very yeah, on the very left corner, that's Joe Bartosi. That's the CEO of the National Shooting Sports Foundation. So the National Shooting Sports Foundation owns Shot Show. Shot Show is their event. Um, oh. to the right of him is Mayor Bart uh <laughs> Mayor Brown. That's Galveston's mayor, then it's me. Then to the right of me is you're gonna see Chief Bally, and then you're gonna see a, a lieutenant to the right of him. Chief Bally is the Galveston police chief. So we are uh, we're passing out. We see see the gun locks in the front. We just passing out gun locks, promote safe and responsible gun storage and firearm safety. Uh so did that at the police station, then we went to the hood and passed them out as well. So you know, it was a good time. Good time. That's what's up. That's what's up, boss. You making moves. You've been making man, I, moves. Man, I try, man. I try, man. Yeah, that's what's up, man. You doing it for real, for real. Now, if you don't um if you don't mind, walk us into uh you and being a 2A influencer. Like I, I really appreciate you explaining your whole uh transition on each year going to the shot show and how you was able to gauge, you know, your own progress based on that. But um for anybody that's looking out there to either try to enter the 2A game as a gun influencer or that's already in it and they're looking to up their game. You got any any words of advice you can spit to them? Man, yeah. So it's really not that hard, man. You got to take yourself out uh, away from the phone and not be a consumer and be a seller. So you're trying to sell yourself to whoever you, you try to promote yourself to whoever you want to see. Um, we so we the thing you got to think about, we, you know what you like to see. You know what you like to post. You know what you like to see. Do that. Do what you like to see. Do what you like to do. Post that. Uh, but really, I think social media comes down to two things. You're either entertaining or you're you're good at something. You, you can do something I can't. Either you're super entertaining or you can do something that I can't. Or you have something that I don't. One right. of them, that's one and the same. So that's the hustle like right that. there. Yeah, that's the hustle. Either I'm super or I'm educational. Up. And I'm super smart. I'm knowledgeable. I know what I'm talking about. Or information, inform, inform, informative. Yeah, yeah. Those, are, those are the keys. Like something like that. Like uh, you got to know your lane, man. There's so many people. Like you want to change your fame. There's nothing wrong with wanting fame. I tell people that all the time. You need people to entertain. You need people to show and put a spotlight on whatever whatever industry that is. You need people. You need that. You need fame. But you also need change. I'm on a change route. That's why I went nonprofit, man, and stuff like that. Because uh, I can give you the blueprint. I know what makes social media. Like I just told you, that's the blueprint right there. Being entertaining, uh, have something that they don't, or do be able to do stuff that they can't, or be informative, man. I'm trying to. It's easy. Post guns that people don't have. They gonna love you. Like oh, I want this and oh, uh, go shoot. If people can't shoot. They're gonna be like, man, I want to shoot that. Uh, you know, just that's all it is, man. I. I'm able to shoot as much as I want. People are like, man, I wish I can shoot this much. This motherfucker shoot every day. Like, you know, it's the stuff that people can't do is what they want to see. Uh, know your lane, though. Figure out what you want to do and, and, and do that. If you want to sell clothes, like I said, hood nigga, I was just selling clothes at first, but I was like, man, this is a culture of people, man. I want to do more. You know, that's what I was like. I didn't want to do the influence route. That was, I know I still have to, but I wanted to focus on building a real organization. Cause you see a lot of influencers, they get to a certain limit. Even if it's a, a a million, two million, five million, they be like, man, I want to start a business and stuff like this. I'm like, oh, no, nah. but people love you for you. Like, man, you know, people come follow you. And that's why it'd be hard for a lot of people to start a business because you're selling, you've been promoting yourself and stuff like that. And that's why I took myself out of it from the beginning because it used to be Chris Hood, Nick on Instagram. And I was like, I said, I'm, I don't want to be famous. I really, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to be the face. Of, I didn't want to okay. be the face of Hood. I wanted to be, you know, be the, the voice of it, but. I don't want to, I'm not trying to be, you know, I don't want to be famous. I just want to change the world, man. You know, I just want to, <laughs> it's yeah. not crazy, but yeah. I really do want to change the world, you know, get my impact. Oh, I feel so you, bro. I feel you. It was this social media going to be there. I saw it was working. I was like, man, it's going to come with it. So I was just like, man, let me not focus on 
trying to be famous. Let me not focus on followers. Let me see how many people I can help. Let me see how many followers I get from helping people. Let me see how many people I can talk to. How many people really fuck with me and how many people really care. How many people see the vision? How many people really hood niggas? Like, yeah, I be talking that hood niggas. It's a lot of hood niggas out there, man. It's so crazy, man. I be meeting people, so many people, man. I, I got sales and I had a sale of some, some hood niggas to some, some, a guy in Korea in the rice field. He was like, man, I'm a Korean version of you. Man, it's a guy up in up in the, like washington and uh in oregon and he uh he he uh school he fishes underwater rides snowmobiles and do all type he a black guy man only black guy i know who do stuff like that cool man i had to got a guy up in uh alaska in the igloo man like it's crazy i people really I, tell, I feel like we're the most diverse uh diversity inclusion organization because uh, you can be from any hood you can be from chicago florida texas houston cali you can be from the country louisiana Montana, Nebraska, Michigan, even yeah, we those Korea got a country. It's a countryside everywhere in the world. It's it's a hood everywhere in the world. Yeah. So that that it's a spin the world, that yeah. category, man. Anybody who feel me, I got Asians who sound like they niggas for real, for real. I, all type of people, all type <laughs> of people. I got a huge Hispanic following, man, because I I'm from Texas, man. We got I got Mexican brothers for real, for real. Like I just told you, I joined the army with one of my brothers. He Mexican. And I I forget he man. That's how close really? he is. Like I, you know, like for real, <laughs> yeah. for real. People be like, man, introduce me to your Mexican friend. And I'm like, oh, ain't no Mexicans. Like, what's he? And I'm like, oh, Louis, Louis Mexican. I'm like, <laughs> like he sure is. But yeah, we. But that's just how. Got white guys who they hood next. Like you don't, you don't discriminate, man. You gotta respect people in the hood everywhere, man. And it's a redneck. Well, it's black people. I got a I got a redneck, red bone uncle from Mississippi who say he's a redneck. So you know it ain't. <laughs> just took the color out of it. Just put everybody together. So. Yeah, I like that, bro. I like that. You oh, doing it, damn it, man. <clears throat> you doing it. So, um, where do you see yourself in the organization going in the future? Man, uh, it's like. The property right now. Once we get this up and running, that's gonna be able to show everybody how <laughs> it's gonna be our. It's just, this is our blueprint because we were trying to buy up to like 50 acres, but we on 15 right now, and that's perfect for what we was trying to do. Because this, that's a lot of land still, and we, we're learning a lot. Like I said, it's still a learning step for us all. So uh, we try. We want the goal for hood niggas to start here, get this up, take care of home up in Galveston County. You know, we're from Galveston. A lot of people don't know what Galveston is the home of Juneteenth. I sit on the board uh, of directors for the council in, in Juneteenth back home. So we just, you know, just trying to take That's care of home slow. first. But after that, we want to put them in all up, one in every state, as many as we can put in that state, but make them applicable to whatever we're at. So if they're in Florida, we may be teaching them how to grow oranges and stuff like that and have different type of animals that, that survive out in Florida better. Then we come out to Georgia. You got Camp Hoodnick in Georgia where it's peaches and they grow on different type of stuff. And you know, you might be in Louisiana. We're doing crawfish in Louisiana. We're we gonna have a little rice crawfish oh, down there, you know. So okay. it's wherever you at, we want to teach you how to survive off the land wherever you at. You know, it's I'm in Texas, so we're gonna have different, you know, we can grow almost anything out here. So it's we just gotta pick one yeah. and, and stick with it. We might be doing rice when we're doing corn, we might be doing straight hydroponics we can do what we want so it's you know but i know everybody don't have the same in their state so just make it like that way we might yeah. be in kansas might just want to do straight corn i might go to number have, have something up in omaha and be like oh we ain't doing nothing but wheat all this up here yeah <laughs> corn hustling all of in, in omaha you know Nebraska. that's all we doing and, and teaching kids agriculture business how to use the land and soil in their front yard that you can this is another source of income you know you can fill your stomach and yeah, make yeah. more money. So you spending less on food and eating more, you know? So if that'll cut in the poverty of life, just want to teach people that. Bet that. Bet that. Well, bro, you said much more than I um much more than I ever thought this interview would be, bro. <laughs> you opened my eyes to a lot of stuff, my damn self. Even I'm picturing because I, I never been to you shot show. I never been to since I've been out of the um out of the military, I I have not known about um a lot of these events and these uh conventions that are going on. So I'm just now starting to peep game myself. But yeah, I'm trying to be at Shot Show. Shot Show is the biggest, and I'm really trying uh, to understand outdoor trade show in the world. So Shot stands for Shooting, Hunting, Outdoor Trade Show. 
shot show. So it's yeah. the biggest shooting hunt and outdoor trade show in the world. It's, so it's so big to see every booth, you know, shot show a week long. To see every booth that shot show, you will have to spend 14 seconds that at each booth to see everyone in that full week. That's how big it is. What? So I'm telling you. Damn, I didn't know it was going down you see like the business. That. The business company. Yeah. Everybody down. <laughs> it's, it's cheat code, man. It's a shot show. Yeah, the way you saying it, I want to go just go try out. to network the way you saying it. So the difference between my shot show, I feel like everybody else shot show is that I didn't go there to to I went there to network for real. And I didn't fan out over yeah. none of the guns and none of that. I wouldn't hear the to play with guns and see guns and that stuff. I didn't care about it. Yeah. I was really straight business. And that's the difference. I see a lot of people coming in and the mistakes they make. Cause it's I was poor as fuck my shot show. I can only imagine what y'all going through. Like <laughs> I'm I'm thinking from experience. I was like, man, I I had to borrow money to get this motherfucker. I don't know what you had to do. You, I feel you in a better mm-hmm. position, but I know you had to spend some money to get here. So man, don't waste it. You know, go there and really <laughs> network, man. I ain't I'm not that uh <laughs> I was not there to play. <laughs> and I did not. I ain't spend no money. I don't drink now, so yeah, I didn't I didn't go there to drink. I didn't go there to party. I didn't go there to gamble. I don't gamble. No. I don't have to do business, man. I'm pole. I'm tired of being pole. I'm trying to <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Else, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For sure. For sure. Now um lastly before we call close everything up. I just want to ask you if you can to give me your three favorite guns. Oh, my Staccato. <laughs> the Staccato XC. My Henry Big Boy 357 level action. I love that, man. Suppress those, suppress on it, throw a can on there. I love that gun, man. Hmm. I used to 38 or 357. Sure. I'm, everything in Texas, I can almost kill the 357 if I really want to, you know. And, yeah, that's my yeah. and my uh let me see. Third. I got my Sakano, I hear it. Probably my Kiapo, my Rhino. I don't know, no, let me take it back. Let me see. <laughs> he can't feel I like my Z Pap. I love my Z Pap. Let me sign them too. Yeah, I say my rhyme though, cause I love revolvers, man. I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm really country. But that Kiapa, that, that thing <laughs> play. I, I got a thing for like skins, like leather skins and and uh, leather and gator and stuff like that and wood grain. But that shit. Yeah, that yeah. Kiapa all black with that wood handle. That's my. I love that thing. For sure, for sure. Well, hey man, I really appreciate you coming on the show, man. This has been episode 49 of the War Dog Trail podcast. If you don't mind, just one last time, let everybody know where they can find you. Hood. Yo, man, you can find Hood Neck on Instagram at H O O D N E C K underscore at the end. We're on TikTok as well and also on YouTube at Hood Neck TV. Uh, if you want to get merch or apparel, you can go to hoodneck.org. That's H O O D N E C K dot org. O R G. If you want to reach out to me, it's Chris at Hood Neck. It's Chris at hoodnick.org is our email address if y'all want to come out, shoot, have some fun, and learn anything. So, always here. All right, you heard it from the man. This has been episode 49 of the War Dog Trail. Salute. Enjoy your week. <laughs>